So the first aspect of volcanic hazard I wanted to highlight was distant source volcanoes and with a focus on the central North Island volcanic zone. This is uh, Ruapehu in 1995. It has a risk posed to Auckland from volcanic ash fall and there are applications for civil aviation associated with that. If we were to have volcanic ash spread across the city, that's going to have implications for our electricity, lifeline utilities, uh, networks. Um, if the ash gets wet, it becomes conductive and it can trip wires. Um, in addition, um, we'll be looking at the potential for water contamination um, and, and the likes of those issues. Taranaki was act in the 1800s where it had a minor eruption. The last time it, it, it really blew its top was six, about 1655. White Island is quite an obvious one. It smokes away as we speak. Last main eruptive phase was 1976 to 1993. And there's also five others. Mirror Island, Mount Narahoe. Mount Narahoe has on average erupted every nine years, but it hasn't erupted since 1975. So since colonisation of New Zealand, it's erupted approximately 16 times, but it has been rather uh, in a dormant phase recently. Mount Narahoe is the most active volcano in the North Island volcanic field. To the right of there, on the top we have Taupo, still potentially active. Um, there's earthquakes, minor earthquakes going on under there all the time. Just to the north of there, we've got the caldera field, so that's Okatina. So this is a, an area of active geothermal volcanic activity that has the potential to erupt at any time. There's a number of volcanic areas through there, um, and they have potential, uh, potential to cause um, ashfall within, within Auckland. The Northland and Auckland volcanic fields are what we call monogenetic. Each of the volcanoes erupt only once, um, but there is the potential for them to erupt again. There's a number of hazards that we might expect in Auckland from an eruption within the Auckland volcanic field. Uh, one of the key areas to note is that we don't know because it's monogenetic. We, we, we don't know where the next eruption will occur and uh, when it will occur. Uh, and I'll just quickly go through um, each of these. Base surge, which is um, part of the eruptive phase, as soon as we start to get uh, magma erupting or um, gas large debris coming up, as that column of gas and debris ascends into the atmosphere, it collapses down on itself and it sends essentially what is a smaller pyroclastic flow out. And um, estimates are that, based on um, the assessments undertaken by the Auckland Volcanic Field, is that it's in a, a three kilometre radius around the vent. Um, ash and debris, um, fire fountaining, which is the um, actual magma being fountained, um, released from pressure um, coming through the crust there. Uh, shock waves is one that's not really recognised. When we get the initial eruption, we'll get shock waves of air that come out from the vent, um, impact windows, glass, buildings, uh, etc. Poisonous gases, um, earthquakes, which are a precursor to the eruption and tsunami if it does occur within the harbour, the gulf, um, or any of those areas.